Welcome back to the final part of The Curious Show. We will discuss a bit more about translational research with NGS technology and chat a bit more about long-range sequencing or third-generation sequencing with our invited guests from Pacific Biosciences and also check on our colleague Sanjana's project on microbiome research and see how the final step data analysis goes. Let's take a look. Now it's time for a quality check, and the KaiXL is a great instrument for that. It's important to ensure that the libraries are of expected size and that there's no contamination, such as adapter dimers. Upon checking the quality of the library, each library's concentration has to be determined. The gold standard for this is qPCR. Once each library's concentration is determined, each library is diluted to the same concentration of four nanomoles and combined into a single pool to be further diluted and denatured for sequencing. While qPCR is the gold standard for library quantification, it's a long and cumbersome process of about three hours, especially for a large number of libraries. KaiSeq Normalizer is a fast, efficient and reliable alternative that can bypass the qPCR process to deliver normalized libraries. Each library will be at 4 nanomole concentration after the process and ready for pooling and sequencing. This is the final library that will be inserted into the sequencing cartridge. Let's do it! I've loaded the sample and flow cell on the sequencer and started the sequencing run. That's it. Now we can easily review the sequencing run quality from the office. Great. Thank you, Sanjana, for showcasing the sequencing step. Um, I'm very excited for her. I think she's almost there. She's almost done. Um, I would like to uh, quickly remind everyone to not forget our challenge to solve the six-letter word, which you can win a prize for. So please be sure to submit your answer along with your name um, in the chat box. Um, next, I think we have just a very short discussion mm -hmm. about translational research, how NGS technology is helping us to move from basic research to translational research. Peter, yeah. um, can you comment very quickly about um, how NGS technology is helping us um, to get into clinical applications? Yeah. Yeah, I think translational is again a very big topic, uh, you know, in the science today. And what does it actually mean, translation? It's actually that the describes the process of applying, you know, scientific finding and basic features into human health, or to put it in other words, to translate actually scientific discovery in a laboratory setting in a practical application in order to improve clinical outcomes or patient care. So that's more or less where then, particularly what we also heard from Marina, where NGS technology can really, you know, improve uh, those patient health. Yeah, yeah. So speaking of translational research, uh, we had the privilege of speaking with one of our customers, um, Dr. Barnaby Clark from King's College London, uh, where his research is based on his work in clinical oncology. Um, so let's take a look yes. at his um, research. Let's do. Hi, I'm Barnaby Clark, a clinical scientist based at King's College Hospital. I'm the laboratory lead for precision medicine and uh, responsible for delivery of uh, genomic testing. We've got uh, gene panels in service delivering uh, myeloid disorders, lymphoid disorders, uh, adult neurological brain tumors, and uh, pediatric tumors, PAT gene panels as well. I first heard about KaiSeq technology uh, at a Kaijin user meeting. I'd previously been using the clinically relevant uh, cancer panel, the KaiSeq technology gave us, if you like, the best of both worlds. It gave us the depth and focused and targeted ability of the PCR Amplicon panels, uh, but it was also a library prep methodology which was far more uh, simplistic than the uh, bait capture technologies 
So we thought that it would probably be much easier to kind of automate because we previously had issues with automation. And prior to actually using Kaiseek technology, we did look at uh, evenness of coverage across our regions of interest, particularly in GC rich regions, uh, such as in CEBP Alpha Gene. Uh, we compared this to bait capture technologies and found that there's effectively about one log order better evenness of coverage that comes from the Kaiseek technology. And this is really useful because you're trying to use that evenness of coverage to means that you're really maximizing uh, the sequence that comes off of the Illumina sequences uh, to your regions of interest. So we've designed uh, a very small uh, 100 Ampicon uh, human identification panel uh, in collaboration with Kaijin. Uh, we're using Kaiseek panels for MRD monitoring uh, by sequencing. We then, using the diagnostic gene panel data, we can identify mutations that we want to use as markers to monitor these patients going longer term. We are restricting the region of interest down specifically to the actual patient and the patient's tumour profile that they had, and then the sequencing a smaller region of interest per patient so we can maximise the amount of sequencing depth uh, and reduce the cost. So we're hoping to be able to sequence on a, on a MySeq uh, sequencer eight to 10 uh, individual patients with redepths up to something like 20,000, uh, hoping to get to, to below 1% allele frequency detection. This is still a research project, uh, but uh, at the moment, the data is looking promising and we're quite hopeful. We're looking at Kaiseek targeted probe chemistry and its application for MRD monitoring using sequencing and also to see if we can uh, develop a non-invasive prenatal test for sickle cell disease. Firstly, the uh, hands-on time of the library prep is down to around six hours, uh, which means that we can do a, a library prep uh, for a gene panel uh, within a day, and then the next day we can uh, quite comfortably kind of uh, normalize and load onto the sequencer. And potentially with an extended day, we could potentially deliver this in a whole day. So that's very attractive for cancer labs where turnaround times are uh, short. The other part of the chemistry that we like is the minimal number of bead cleanups that are required in the library prep. Instead of having bead cleanups, it's enzymatically treated at every stage in the, in the library prep, which means that the number of starting molecules within there uh, stays the same. So your complexity of your library should, in, in theory, be better. And this is important in, in applications where you've got very few template starting molecules, such as in MR, MRD monitoring or NIPT. But uh, really the uh, coverage is excellent across uh, Kaisi. And also the other advantage of the technology being that it moves us into build 38. And there's a transition at the moment going on in our lab of moving all our gene panels from build 37 to build 38. So I think for our uh, sensitive assays for monitoring, it may be the sequencing chemistry of choice for us at the moment. I guess working with Kyogen uh, benefits us because uh, it enables us really to kind of deliver our projects uh, in, in as quick a time as possible. I've been working with Kyogen really for my entire professional life, um, starting off with uh, DNA library preps and DNA extraction, and that's continued through really uh, to today. <coughs> That's great. Um, I'm so glad to hear our solutions are <coughs> able to help Dr. Barnaby Clark study um, in, his in his lab. Uh, so next, um, I think we previously surely touched upon third generation sequencing long read, um, spearheaded by Pacific Biosciences PacBio um, and ONT. Um, shall we chat a bit about the third generation of sequencing? Yeah, I think as you mentioned, we already touched a couple of times already in our show today on long read sequencing, which has, you know, certain advantages, particularly for soil genes or complex genomic variants. Um, but instead of you and me discussing about it, I think you also had a chance to speak to an expert out in the market. Absolutely. Um, I had the privilege of speaking with Dr. Jonas Korlach from Pacific Biosciences. He is the one of the founders and chief science officer from PacBio. Um, so let's take a look. See? How do you think sequencing technology, more specifically PacBio's long read sequencing technology, has transformed research in the past decade? 
Certainly, we've seen that NGS has been fundamentally transforming the research and translational biology fields, giving us unprecedented information about the genomics of biological systems. And um, over the past decade, and in particular with regard to PEC biosequencing, perhaps over the past four or five years, it's been very exciting to see how long read PEC bio and hi fi sequencing have brought about fundamental paradigm shifts in genomics. We now understand that the human genome is really six gigabases in size and not three gigabases because you have two copies, uh, one from the mother and one from the father in each of your cells. And of course, it is important to understand um, those differences and phase the mutations to the uh, two haplotypes. The field is now moving to pan-genome references, adding hundreds of millions of bases and really capturing the differences between the different ethnicities uh, for the first time, really understanding the full extent of genetic variation across the human population um, and all types of variants, not just single nucleotide variants and indels, but also the uh, a large amount of structural genetic variation that exists. Um, Full-length RNA sequencing for a better understanding of transcriptomes, unprecedented resolution of microbiome. So in all these different areas, long read uh, sequencing and highly accurate PEC bio hi fi sequencing has been instrumental in bringing about a shift, a paradigm shift in having better tools to really access the genomic information. And um, as an evidence uh, for this impact, um, Long read sequencing was named the method of the year of 2022 by the Nature Methods uh, Journal in the beginning of this year. Tell us, in your view, what are some areas where PEC bio sequencing technology has made a big impact on the quest of improving human health? One of the areas where PEC bio hi fi sequencing has been impactful over the last few years is in the area of research in rare and inherited disease cases, and often these are affected children, where a more comprehensive understanding of the genome, the evaluation of new types of variations, such as structure variation, as I mentioned before, allows the researcher to explain the underlying molecular cause of certain disease cases that previously were unexplained. And in addition to the value in the research, it has been in tremendous value and impact to the families um, who often have uh, gone years and sometimes decades without an explanation for the uh, underlying root cause of the particular disease. Um, and another uh, area that um, I think has been uh, important is in, in, as the, in the larger context of human health is in the area of agriculture, and biodiversity and conservation genomics research. So it's plant and animal genomics, improve crops, um, make them more disease resistant, adapt to climate change, understanding those processes. And uh, that's really been um, uh, of great impact as well in the last few years. Would you like to say a few words to our audience um, in the future of sequencing genomics and in pushing research innovation forward? We really have shifted the paradigm from a technology to from one sequencing technology that had to be adapted to all the different kinds of um, questions and problems that are uh, relevant to genomics. First, it was Sanger sequencing and then uh, Illumina short read sequencing. And now the situation is very different where um, different technologies exist um, and some sequencing technologies are better suited to certain problems than others. And so, for example, for germline sequencing, for genome references, for true whole genome sequencing, it's very clear that long reads are uh, better suited for this type of application. And this is where uh, we believe that PEC bio hi fi sequencing is a uh, superior tool to um, characterize genomes. And then on the flip side, um, for liquid biopsies, for cell-free DNA, where you're dealing with very short fragments to begin with and need to count billions of them to find the needle in the haystack, as it were, short read sequencing is a great tool for that. And um, we have recently uh, introduced a higher accuracy short read sequencer with the ONSO system because we believe that both in long and short read sequencing, there are 
opportunities for higher accuracy um, data that will then allow it, uh, the community to have much more confidence in the results uh, for much easier bioinformatic analysis. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks to Jonas Kollach, one of the founders of Pack Bio, for that great insight he has shared with us, you know, for the potential of uh, long weed. And of course, we, not only me and you, I guess, uh, a lot of other people are very curious, you know, what's happening, happening with long weed in the next years and the, you know, how it will establish in the clinical and also, of course, in research applications. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think it will be great to see. Uh, hopefully. I think long read and short reads, they each have their advantages, and um, we would love to see how they would complement each other um, to push genomic research forward, mm -hmm. and we can all benefit from it in the future yeah. to take advantage of precision medicine. Um, as we're getting closer to the end of the show, um, I would like to um, uh, maybe push the final, uh, one of the final poll questions. Um, what did you like about our show? Um, hopefully we have provided a very entertaining show to our audience members. Um, so please, we invite you to join our um, poll question. Um, lastly, I want to check in with Sanjana. I wonder how she's doing with her microbiome project. Um, let's, do, let's see how she's doing with her final step, um, the analysis. Yes. Let's take a look. Once the sequencing is completed, we can start the data analysis. Kyogen offers several intuitive, easy to use bioinformatics solutions, such as GeneGlobe, the RNA analysis portal, and the microbial analysis portal. We'll be using the microbial analysis portal to analyze the data from our samples. In this graph, each color represents a different bacterial species. As we can see, the sample before antibiotic treatment has many more colors, which represents a much higher diversity of microbes compared to the sample after antibiotic treatment. And the ratio of bacteria has also changed. This highlights the impact antibiotics have on the gut microbiome. And that's it. From sample to insight in just four easy steps. Great. I hope we have showcased yep. um, that NGS technology is easier to access than ever. Um, it is truly at the tip of your finger to access. It's nothing to fear. Uh, so with that, let's announce our winner for today. But first, the solution to our challenge. Um, so i like to announce today's solution. The sixth letter word is Kaya Seek. Q-I-A-S-E-Q. -E we will notify today's winner by email. Yeah, congratulations also from my side, and I think with yeah, that, with that, we can... Happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Yeah, we can... Thank you for joining the show. Close the show. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a nice Christmas. Bye. Bye.